All right. Good afternoon or morning, everyone. My name is Terry Morton. I am a program manager with the National Alliance for Public Safety GIS Foundation. From our team is also Charlotte Abel, will be your host for today's prep tech talk on preparedness technology and tools. We will also be joined by leaders in the industry who will be sharing their knowledge and unique experiences, and we will introduce them in just a minute. Uh, a few logistics before we jump in. Due to the large number of participants on the webinar, your lines are muted. However, we would like to encourage you to utilize the Q&A feature throughout the webinar today as you have questions or comments. And if time allows, we'll select a few at the end to go through. We did have a link and QR code showing prior that is now in the chat. So if you can take a moment, go to that link and ask that one quick question, that would be very helpful. So now I'm very excited you all have joined us for this fourth topic in our prep tech talk series this year, where we'll be sharing the latest in preparedness technology and tools. So some of the key objectives for today, um, we're hoping you'll learn the basics of FEMA's preparedness toolkit, including how to access the site and the types of resources available. We expect that even those of you who are already familiar with Prep Toolkit will appreciate a refresher on all that is available as well as learn about a number of resources that may be new to you. Learn how you can leverage location enabled tools, regardless of your technical expertise or the technical resources that you have at your disposal to develop plans and realistic exercise scenarios, as well as learn about the tools and guidance available to GIS staff who support the emergency management mission. And lastly, you'll be learning from industry leaders on how they implemented Prep Toolkit's tools and resources in their community. So before we get to the full agenda, I just wanted to share the tremendous group of speakers and panelists we have joining us uh, for today's webinar. You may recognize some of these names, particularly the Prep Toolkit team. We will hear from some of them, but they are also here to answer your questions. So a special thanks to them for helping us develop and conduct this webinar. So here's our agenda for today's webinar. We are about to go through a very brief introduction and then provide an overview on FEMA's preparedness toolkit. Uh, we'll share some of the how to's for accessing prep toolkit and explore some of the resources you may be interested in based on your role, including a demo of the hazard explorer tool for developing realistic exercise scenarios. So from there, um, how you can leverage exercise starter kits to develop tabletop exercises tailored for your jurisdiction and then finally, we have panelists from the community who are already implementing components of Prep Toolkit that we are extremely grateful for being with us today to share their successes and challenges and some lessons learned to hopefully assist the folks listening in to give you a jump start on potential and potentially avoid some pitfalls. We will then hopefully have a few minutes to wrap up and answer any questions or address comments that you have um, in the Q&A feature. So uh, for those of you new to our organization, I'd just like to briefly talk about who we are. National Alliance for Public Safety GIS Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit organization governed by an independent board of directors that are primarily public safety practitioners with 30 plus years of experience in the field. So we were formed almost 30 years ago as an alliance between a number of prominent national associations, some of which you see here. And we have evolved into a formal organization over the course of that time, growing to a national um, network of over 20,000 members, both public safety and jazz practitioners alike, representing local, state, tribal, county levels, including the private and critical infrastructure uh, sectors as well. And our mission and vision um, really spans uh, local and national level. Um, so we're excited to see a, a pretty expansive um, representation today. Um, this is the geographic extent of the participation on the webinar mapped by zip code. And this was as of last night and it's pretty nice distribution across the country. You can also see the breakdown here of attendees by discipline in this lower left um, was a pretty large uh, contingent of emergency management professionals, um, but pretty, pretty solid throughout as well as in the top left uh, by sectors and levels of government. Um, we can see that there's a, a pretty large local government contingent, which is pretty typical given our outreach and focus, followed by federal government, private sector. 
So as I mentioned, our vision kind of spans really the full spectrum of preparedness through recovery. And it is equipping first responders, operators, and decision makers, not only with the knowledge and skills in applying technology and data, but ensuring access to the right actionable information at the right time. We know this has to be determined and practiced prior to an incident, well before the response phase. And information technologists should be working with their counterparts to identify hazards in a community, their potential impacts to the people and built and non-built environment, and then identify what information first responders, operators, and decision makers need at different points to effectively respond to and recover from an emergency. So how do we do what we do? Well, at our core as an organization, we primarily work to define and promulgate the consistent use of best practices. And we do this through the development of national guidelines and standards. And that is something that we've been doing since almost the beginning, identifying best practices from across the nation, and in some cases internationally, and then clearly defining and documenting those in the form of guidelines and standards. We also conduct a variety of exercises and simulations to encourage and foster regional collaboration. And this also helps us to document implementation challenges and what works well and to further validate and or update guidance based on those activities. Additionally, we provide a number of education and training opportunities like what we're doing today, as well as some live and in-person workshops at our annual summit. And finally, we work to transfer that knowledge and skills to the community. And we do this through a number of mechanisms, whether it be organization to organization, videos, written tutorials to toolkits, and so on. And we do this to support building the capacity and capabilities of our nation, which is our mission. So shown here are some of the resources that we provide to support the implementation of standards and best practices and to ultimately transfer that knowledge and those skills. And I would encourage you to visit the site. We are always publishing new tools and resources to support your various missions. And all, of the, all of this is accessible through our NAPSIG Foundation website by going to the resources tab. For example, the last prep tech talk was on information sharing standards and that guidance along with others can be found in the guidelines and templates and links to materials from that and previous prep tech talks and webinars and summits can be found in our events page. And you can also find our complete symbol library links to technical training and previous webinars um, all here. So all of the resources here and the ones that we're about to show you in FEMA's preparedness toolkit are meant to help ready the community during blue skies. So through the implementation of best practices, the adoption of industry standards, development and practice standard operating procedures, your respective organizations can be better prepared to respond to and recover from an emergency. So I'm gonna try and take a look at the results to see if anybody has responded to our Mentimeter. Oh, it didn't work, but I'll pull it up in a second and then we'll come back to it. Um, so next, I'd like to um, introduce Mark Ledbetter. We're really excited to have him with us here today. Mark is the Chief of the Exercise Doctrine and Technology Integration Section of the National Exercise Division. Um, so with that, I will go ahead and turn it over to you, Mark. All right, thank you. Um, next slide, please. First, I'd like to thank um, NACSA for hosting this webinar, um, especially Rebecca Harnan and Terry Martin for all their time and effort they put um, put behind this. Uh, NAPSIG is a great partner and I really enjoy working with them. Next, I'd like to thank the Prep Toolkit team comprised of both FEMA staff and the contract team. They are the heart, soul, and brains behind Prep Toolkit. And I'd like to say for them, it's really more than a job, it's a passion. Because they have to put up with me texting, calling, and emailing at all hours. And there's stories out there, I'm notorious while I'm driving back from my daughter's field hockey game or lacrosse game or I'm stuck on I-270, for those who know anything about DC, on my way back from EMI, I will hear something on the radio or see something and, and make me think of something. And the next thing, they get a call or some crazy voice text from me. But again, um, really, I like to thank them. I'll be sure as we, got, as we get started, we have a great group of panelists lined up for you today. 
Um, so here we go. The nation's preparedness um, professionals work hard to ensure that our nation's resiliency. Their jobs also come with very few resources. This is where PREP Toolkit comes in. PREP Toolkit is much more than just a federal exercise system. The system is an online portal that provides the preparedness community with tools and aiding in implementing preparedness solutions across all six components of the national preparedness system. Maybe I'm kind of selfish in the design in that without all the other preparedness elements, exercises would not be robust, realistic, or meet the intended goal of testing and validating capabilities to help us improve and prepare for disasters. I truly believe that PREP Toolkit embodies the famous mission of helping people before, during, and after exercises. The goal of the, of the event today is not to make you an expert user, nor could we really do the system justice within one hour. It's intended to make you aware of the system and its capabilities. Actually, I'm on a break from what I call PREP Toolkit Bootcamp for a group out west in FEMA Region 9, getting ready for NLE 2020. Prep Toolkit Bootcamp is an all-day fingers on keyboard session where we take the group through all the exercise functions in the system. Later, you'll hear from our first initial Prep Toolkit Bootcamp graduates, the state of New Jersey. Last fall, right before Thanksgiving, I had the privilege to work with a team from New Jersey in piloting this concept. And based on that offering, we are now making our way across the country, conducting additional offerings. Example, next week we'll be up in Alaska as part of the AC course to provide prep toolkit training to that group. This leads me to my last thank you, Mom the Academy. No, really, it's the FEMA regional exercise officers and their staff. They are my and the team's connection to the exercise and preparedness community at large. They champion the system and help us coordinate for training. Well, enough for me now, I'd like to turn it over to the heart, one of the heart and soul and brains behind prep toolkit, Charlotte. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mark. So, Terry, can we go to the next slide? So, as we've seen, PREP Toolkit is aligned to and built in support of the National Preparedness System. So, PREP Toolkit provides a means of executing preparedness activities efficiently and easily, but that can only be accomplished if you have access. So, we're going to take a look at PREP Toolkit access and accounts. Um, PREP Toolkit is an online, can we back up one slide, Terry? So Prep Toolkit is an online collaborative environment and it's designed for use by the whole community. So it includes agencies, organizations, and jurisdictions of any size and type that lead or support preparedness efforts. So users don't have to be on a particular network or at a certain level of government in order to gain access. It's accessible over any internet connection, but Prep Toolkit is a secure role-based system on a .gov domain to be used for preparedness activities. activities. So anyone can self-register so self for register an, account. an account. However, each account is reviewed and if approved, it's vetted and granted elevated access to the system. So until the review is complete, self-registered users have the same level of access as a guest user without an account. Uh, so let's take a look at what I can access on Prep Toolkit as a guest without an account. So next slide. If I access Prep Toolkit as a guest, I can access a handful of tools as shown here. So most textual information can be accessed using that interactive graphic of the National Preparedness System that's shown on the right side of the screen here. And each of those six NPS areas in the graphic are clickable and allow me to access more detailed information. And then links to publicly accessible tools and features are provided across the top of the page there, those buttons that you see. So we're going to take a look more closely, just briefly, at each of these tools that I can access as a guest. So next slide. So I can access four primary tools if I access Prep Toolkit as a guest. So the summary of these are on the screen for you, but the first is res the Resource Typing Library Tool, or RTLT, which is an online catalog of all the NIMS resource typing definitions and position qualifications that have been released by FEMA. The next is the Incident Resource Inventory System, or IRIS, which is a distributed software tool that allows me to create an interoperable resource inventory and it connects directly with RTLT to stay up to date with those um, resource typing definitions. So the IRIS software is provided by FEMA at no cost to me, 
and I can download the Iris installer from Prep Toolkit and deploy it in my own environment. Third, third item on that list is the Hazard Explorer, which provides location-enabled tools and resources for comprehensive risk assessments, informed planning processes, and real-world-based exercises. And we'll be covering that tool in more depth in just a few minutes. And lastly, on this page, I can access resources related to the Homeland Security Exercise and Evaluation Program, or HC. So HC doctrine consists of fundamental principles that frame a common approach to exercises. So again, these are the tools that I can access as a guest without an account within Prep Toolkit. If I want access to additional tools, I'll need to create an account. So let's walk through that briefly also. So if I have a FEMA PIV card, gaining a Prep Toolkit user account is really simple. All I have to do is access Prep Toolkit using my PIV card and a user account will be automatically created and vetted for me. But if I don't have a prep toolkit or a FEMA PIV card, if we can go to the next slide, um, gaining a vetted user account follows this basic workflow. So I'll first create a and self-register for a user account within the system following the online prompts that are there. And after this, I will have a user account, but I will still have the same access that I had as a guest. So once I've created an account, that account will be reviewed by managers of Prep Toolkit. And if I'm approved, I will then have a vetted user account that has access to additional tools and features that are not accessible to guests. Can we go to the next slide? Vetted user accounts um, can have roles assigned to them to grant additional access to tools and features within the system. So this allows files and other information to be stored within Prep Toolkit without being accessible to all users. So let's go to the next slide and see what my access looks like now. So if I log into Prep Toolkit with my vetted user account, I can access a number of new tools as shown here. So if we look at those buttons across the top of the page, those circular buttons, um, we can see that I have access to many more links than I did before I had my vetted user account. So let's quickly review each of these tools. So the First, if we go to the next slide, the first is the Emergency Management Toolkit or EM Toolkit, and it provides resources to help the emergency management community at all levels of government prepare for various threats that face the nation. And as a vetted user, I will immediately have access to all of the benefits of this toolkit. The exercises area of Prep Toolkit provides tools to manage exercise planning, design, conduct, and evaluation activities in support of HC. Um, and since access to individual exercises needs to be restricted, elevated roles must be as assigned to me before I can access the content of those exercises. So for instance, if I'm managing an exercise in Prep Toolkit, I know that a user won't be able to access the content I add unless I grant the user permission to do so. Next item is the unified reporting tool that supports complete completion of Thyra, um, and other reporting requirements. So I must be granted special roles and permissions for that tool in order to access the reporting for my jurisdiction. And that ensures the information remains secure. And lastly of what I wanna cover now and touch on is the communities area. So communities provide users with areas to collaborate on specific areas of interest. So within these areas, I can chat, share ideas, post files and interact with other users. Um, some prep toolkit communities are open to all vetted users and then others require special permiss permissions. So each community is set up to meet the specific access needs for that community. So with that overview, I'm gonna hand things back over to Terry so she can cover some of these features in more depth. Thank you. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, so now that you've all heard a good kind of overview on Prep Toolkit and a high level on what the resources are available to you with and without an account, we're going to take a deeper dive into um, the tools within the portal that require no login that can assist your organization in developing some realistic exercise scenarios. So the Homeland Security Exercise and Evaluation Program, or HC, provides guidance for developing a scenario, and that includes the direction for the exercise planning team. So they would use the exercise program priorities and guidance from elected and appointed officials and determine exercise objectives and core capabilities to be assessed. And then 
subject matter experts may develop a realistic and challenging scenario potentially. So we're going to demonstrate how the Hazard Explorer suite and tool and capabilities available to you right now within Prep Toolkit site um, can help you in developing a realistic scenario. So the tool can be used prior and during your initial kind of planning meeting to assess various scenario and hazard conditions that can test exercise objectives and align core capabilities and establish potential requirements for additional modeling and simulation development. And the Hazard Explorer suite, as you'll see in a moment, can assist with discovering hazard specific models and applications to further uh, determine your potential real world impacts if needed. So in a moment, uh, I'll do a demonstration of the tool, but first I want to show you just how to get to it. So uh, as Charlotte showed you prior, so this is the, the welcome screen. This is me not signed in, and these are the tools uh, automatically available to you without a sign in. And the Hazard Explorer uh, suite is available to you right off of this main page. Um, the, the portal is in its essence, a suite of resources that guides users in applying location enabled tools and data during preparedness activities. And you can find guidance on how geospatial data and analysis can inform decision making, reduce duplication and improve cost efficiency and support of emergency management. The Hazard Explorer has resources curated specifically for exercise planners, preparedness planners and GIS staff, as well as some quick links to get you started. So for GIS staff, this section offers resources on governance, standard operating procedures, staffing, technology, training and exercises, and usage of geospatial tools to assist them in their daily operations, supporting preparedness and mitigation activities. And I just want to mention that beyond this section, exploring the roles, geospatial, exploring the geospatial for staff to explore the other roles. Um, that they support is really recommended. So it's a good way to familiar, familiarize yourself if you're a GIS staffer with the requirements that they need to meet and also discover resources already curated for those tasks. The preparedness planner section walks users through integrating GIS into the planning process, whether that be fire development, geo-enabling operational plans, hazard mitigation plans, um, incident action plans and emergency operations plans. So for the exercise planner, um, you'll find tools that help you just integrate GIS into the full exercise planning process. And one of these tools is the Hazard Explorer tool. So this tool is delivered in an easy to navigate map journal to help you to identify hazard exposure within your community, determine a realistic and plausible exercise scenario, and, set, and access a catalog of geospatial data and resources. So we're going to run through an exercise scenario. And Charlotte, I'm going to need to tell me if you can't see my new screen. <laughs> okay, I can't see it yet, but well, there we go. Yeah, excellent. Okay, so I'm not logged into anything. This is where it happens after I click on the Hazard Explorer button on that main page. This is kind of all the stuff I showed you very quickly a minute ago. Um, right here, you can access the Hazard Explorer tool, which I already have preloaded to get us moving a little bit faster. Um, and what you'll see pretty fast is that on the left hand side uh, is some text that guides the user through um, the whole process of assessing different scenarios. You, know, you can see there's just one, two, three. There's three kind of overall steps to identify the hazards, vulnerable populations, and an infrastructure that could be impacted. So in the first section um, of the Hazard Explorer tool, you can search on your community and I'll search for uh, Franklin, Ohio. As so you'll see, I zoom right in and I get more detail on the hazard exposure for my community. So I can click and get a list for my county um, what hazards 
uh, I have exposure to from the 17 that we assess of the, of the different natural, technological, and human caused hazards. So areas in green are exposed to lower numbers of these hazards, while areas in red are exposed to a greater number of these hazards. And I can see that my county is exposed to a number of different hazards indicated by yes or no. Um, one that I see that I'm exposed to is the hurricane hazard. And some of you may remember that Hurricane Ike hit the Columbus area pretty hard. So we're gonna explore that in more detail. And I can just come over to the side and pick which one of the hazards I wanna explore based on this uh, pop-up here. So I'll go ahead and hit on hurricane, which I think I have preloaded, which I do. So each of the hazard pages allow you to explore in more detail that hazard for your community. So within um, this page or section, I can walk through each of the tabs across the top to see the potential impacts to people and infrastructure. So I'm gonna zoom back into my community. And I'll be able to see in more detail areas exposed to this hazard. So in the first view, the hurricane hazard um, where it's showing here, I can click on the people tab to view where the hurricane hazard uh, is in relation to areas of higher vulnerable populations in my region shown in areas of, uh, of shaded gray. And the darker gray represents census tracts with higher proportions of vulnerable populations. So if I, for example, if I click on a lighter color here, you can see it's a pretty low um, vulnerable index. So the darker colors indicate higher, denser populate vulnerable populations, which I may want to focus on in my scenario. And I can also see other indicators. I can see where mobile homes and nursing homes are that I may also want to take into consideration. So next I can then run through the various community lifeline tabs across the top of the map to see where my county's population is most vulnerable and what infrastructure and resources would be most impacted in this area to best select my exercise scenario location. So for example, I can look at the communications tab and identify different areas that may be impacted, as well as clicking through, I can see that the Southwest area of Columbus region contains a lot of energy facilities. There's a good bit of food, water, shelter infrastructure, as well as health and medical facilities scattered throughout the region. I can then click on hazardous materials and get a good sense of where um, fixed facility sites are located that could pose significant challenges and potentially cascading effects. I can review impacts to transportation lifeline, potentially focusing on those. Our exercise program plan wants to test and stress resources. And then lastly, as you would expect, there's a significant number of safety and security infrastructure in the Columbus region. So we can start to plan, um, should, our, should an area be impacted with, without service? Um, and we can certainly justify, I think, as, you, as you've gone through and seen the hazard, vulnerability, populations, and infrastructure, we can certainly justify exercising this scenario, particularly if we're looking to develop a regional exercise. And exercise planners can also pre-identify areas within this region that could be more severely impacted to create realistic scenarios that challenge specific capabilities that your exercise plan is looking to test. So as the final output of the tool, I can now create a basic PDF map or JPEG um, of the Columbus area and collect links to data sources that I can share with my GIS staff to conduct a more in-depth analysis um, for use in planning, conducting my exercise. So, and I can turn on different map layers showing the lifelines I identified in previous steps. Um, for a scenario example that includes maybe down communications, I can show cell towers, um, FM, transmission towers, and AM, for example. And I can dig into this data and find exactly where the source is coming from here, if I want to, just to know. 
And this is available for all of the data that we have both base data and live data available feeding this app. Now, there are a number of additional tools located at the bottom to further customize your map, and I can add my own local data if I want. Um, I can change the base map. I can mark it up and put arrows and identify particular um, locations of interest. I also have some analysis tools down here, which show me the total population and vulnerable population within the extent of the map. So if this is something I really want to focus on, I can zoom and pan in and out and identify which areas really would be most impacted with vulnerable populations. And then the last tab, for those of you who have um, some GIS or technical staff on hand, you can point them to this um, last tab where all the data and resources used to run the analysis are in here. Oh, sorry, I'm not logged in. Um, so all of this is available to you and your staff and you can see that it did not take any kind of uh, technical um, resources to produce. Um, so staff without a GIS person can certainly run through this process um, regardless of you know, the expertise that you have at your disposal. Now I'm going to switch over and let me know Charlotte if I <laughs> it's not showing. <laughs> okay, it's Let's not yet. Maybe I'll just minimize. There we go. How about that? No, not yet. Okay. There we go. It's up. excellent. <laughs> All right. So this is a quick link and we'll put this in the, the chat as well for folks, but it's, as I mentioned, it's available right off of FEMA's prep toolkits. Okay, sorry, I had a little hiccup there. Um, so now that you've kind of seen the Hazard Explorer tool and some of the methodologies for developing a scenario, I wanted to turn it back over to Mark Ledbetter to talk about some of the um, uh, resources available to you, which include exercise starter kits. All right, thanks, Terry. I'm gonna give everybody a homework assignment now. You guys thought you're getting off easy. When you get done with this um, webinar, I, I challenge you to go into Prep Toolkit and Hazard Explorer and take a look of your, uh, and see what you're exposed to around your home, your work of business, where you grew up. So it's an interesting way to take a look and see what's in your community. As Terry demonstrated, it does not take a lot of um, skill. They even taught me how to do it. So if they can <laughs> teach me, they can teach anybody. So um, next slide, please. So remember when I spoke earlier about many times the preparedness community does not has or has scarce resources. Well. What we're gonna talk about now, the exercise starter kits were intended to help fill that gap. So each of the exercise starter kits comes with pre-populated material. Sometimes I refer to, it, refer to it as exercise mad libs. Just fill in the blanks with information related to your jurisdiction organization. Um, again, this is not geared just towards our emergency management community. Um, exercise starter kits can be utilized by private sector, healthcare, the, the preparedness community as a whole. The foundation of each of the exercise starter kit is comprised of a situation manual, a facilitator guide, conduct slide, and scene setter videos. Um, as we spoke earlier, the exercise starter kit are part of a larger element referred to as the emergency management toolkit where you can find additional preparedness resources. Um, the exercise starter kits are located in the test session of each of those um, EM toolkits. As the slide points out, the exercise starter kit re requires a prep toolkit account, which was covered earlier by Charlotte. So next slide, please. The current set of exercise starter kits were designed to help um, support the implementation of the 2019-2020 National Exercise Program Principal Strategic Priorities. That's, a, that's quite a mouthful we have, which there are nine. Um, I like to call the Principal Strategic Priorities the nation's exercise roadmap. The principal strategic priorities were developed based on analysis of past real world events, exercise after action reports, 
threats and hazard information and guidance and input from our senior leaders. I'm not gonna read them to you, but as you can see, they cover a broad spectrum. And I like to say, it'd be hard to find an exercise that would not fit into one of the nine. So again, some additional homework. After this session, please take time and go download one of them and consider using it for your next tabletop. The only request I have, if you utilize one of them, please provide feedback. There's a feedback button for each of the exercise starter kits. We can only re really do our job with input from the preparedness community. And I know you guys don't listen to me, so now I have the great uh, pleasure and honor to introduce one of our initial prep toolkit bootcamp graduates from the great state of New Jersey, Josh. Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Josh Matoran. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I work in the New Jersey Office of Emergency Management, the Training and Exercise Unit. Uh, I'm responsible for planning and coordinating uh, our annual state exercises with all of our state level and uh, interested county uh, emergency management partners. Next slide, please. So in 2019, uh, our annual state exercise, uh, the scenario we used was a uh, transportation incident. It was a functional exercise uh, held on June 12th. And what we wanted to do is test the ability to uh, coordinate information and uh, the need for resources associated with the impacts of a uh, train derailment uh, in a densely populated area of the state. We had a freight train uh, collide with a passenger train, resulting in mass casualty, mass fatality, the release of hazardous materials. Um, pretty big exercise. Functional, so therefore we are operating here uh, at our state EOC. Uh, 12 of our 21 counties participated uh, and two additional NGOs. We had a 10 member design, I'm uh, sorry, a 15 member design team and, and 10 agencies. Uh, participating in our uh, exercise planning. So traditionally we would use things like Excel spreadsheets and Word documents and other things to, uh, to plan and, uh, and conduct our exercise. But uh, just at the start of our planning cycle, uh, which was uh, late last summer, uh, we learned about the new capabilities of Prep Toolkit uh, and that it could be used as an online collaborative exercise management tool. Uh, although initially skeptical uh, of any new technology, uh, we decided to, uh, to take, take a peek uh, and Mark and his team were, uh, were happy to come and, and show us the capabilities of the tool. And we were so glad that we, we made the decision to utilize that tool. Uh, next slide, please. So we'll talk a little bit about how we use the tool and what we got out of it. So. We use the tool as a uh, collaborative platform. All of our exercise design team members uh, had access to the tool, uh, which I managed. As you heard earlier, uh, there's security and access control. People need to be vetted and then added into each exercise in the various roles that they would participate in so that they'd be able to, uh, to view and edit various pieces of information. So we use, uh, use it as a file repository to put things like meeting minutes and other things. Um, we used it to, uh, to manage our, our, our measles, our exercise script, uh, evaluation guides. All, we managed everything in Prep Toolkit. So some of the benefits also included, again, the, the roles and the access control, uh, the fact that we had a, a virtual team which didn't previously have any kind of uh, collaborative platform. So previously we had issues with uh, sharing files via email that exceeded uh, size limits, uh, firewalls, other sorts of things, and that, uh, you know, those issues were overcome by using Prep Toolkit. Uh, since Prep Toolkit is a database, um, information that's changed in one area is then cascaded to another. So, for example, um, contact information for a player who's going to receive an exercise inject, if I, if I update that in the exercise uh, phone book, let's say, uh, then that information then uh, is populated into uh, the measles, the exercise script. Uh, so that, that information, those changes are immediately visible to everyone uh, on the team. Um, things are, it's, it's full integration from our objectives to the capabilities that we're testing, the exercise injects, the evaluation guides, et cetera. Um, we use a feature of Prep Toolkit, which, which we found very helpful. Uh, it's email capability. So we were able to deliver injects to exercise players via email. Um, of course, we had people playing in our EOC who received uh, 
injects face to face. Uh, we had other injects delivered by phone, but our uh, our measles included injects that were uh, to be delivered by email, and at the appropriate time we could press a button and an email would be delivered to um, to our exercise players. The flip side of that, also an advantage, was that we would then see any email responses that those players uh, sent back to the sim cell, and that was very helpful. Uh, also for exercise evaluation. After the exercise had concluded, we could see how our players responded uh, and reacted to those injects. And then talking specifically about exercise evaluation, um, Prep Toolkit really helped us on our exercise evaluation the entire process. So when building uh, or planning evaluation and building our exercise evaluation guides, Prep Toolkit allowed us to drill down from exercise objectives to exercise evaluation guides, uh, into the targets and tasks that were associated with each one uh, so that we knew prior to the exercise exactly what each evaluator needed to, needed to look for during exercise conduct. Um, and then once, once they observed the exercise, they would go back into Prep Toolkit and complete their exercise evaluation guides, put in their, uh, their ratings and their, and their comments all captured in the database for the exercise manager, uh, myself, um, and, and others to see uh, to help us build our, eventually build our after action, our AAR. Uh, really, really helpful. Uh, much better, I don't know if, if everyone on the call is like me with terrible handwriting, uh, much better than trying to decipher someone's uh, handwritten notes from an exercise. And then to, uh, to conclude that, when, we're, when all of our EEGs were completed, Prep Toolkit allowed us to automatically generate an after action report. We were able to, um, uh, to do the AAR uh, and other exercise documents, uh, such as our, our exercise plan, our X plan, uh, by taking all the information to prep, from Prep Toolkit, pressing a button, and Prep Toolkit automatically populated a template. Uh, for those documents using information contained inside the tool. Next slide, please. Actually, I have to pause for just one moment. I've lost my connection to, to the meeting. Just give me one second. Okay. So, success factors. You know, why were we so successful in using Prep Toolkit uh, for this year's exercise. Number one, and I would encourage everyone who's, who's interested in, in using it, uh, we, eng we engaged Mark and Caitlin and the rest of their team early in the process. As I mentioned, uh, planning for the 2019 exercise started um, back in August of 2018. That's when we had our uh, concept and objectives meeting uh, following the HC process. Uh, but right around that time frame was when we had Mark in. Uh, to give us an overview, to let us decide whether or not we wanted to jump in with two feet. Um, and then throughout the process, we received training, um, and they were, the team was incredibly responsive to questions uh, that we had about how to, how to use the tool uh, to, our, uh, to our best capacity, uh, responding to phone calls, emails, at, at all times of the day and night. Uh, next, in addition to the training, we had a we established a, a practice exercise site that we can play with, um, especially since we were new to the tool. It was very very helpful. Uh, we identified a single point of contact that was myself, uh, so that if team members had questions, as I was gaining a little bit more experience using the tool more than some others, um, some questions I was able to answer, and then when necessary, I was able to uh, to escalate to the to the prep toolkit team. Um, we actually had the team here on site during uh, exercise conduct and some of our, um, our major milestone meetings, uh, our measles sync meeting, um, our uh, controller and evaluator training sessions, again, very helpful. We made sure we had infrastructure here um, at the New Jersey Office of Emergency Management to, uh, to take full advantage of the tool. Number one, uh, wireless connectivity, uh, and, but even more importantly, um, Imagine our sim cell where we were controlling the exercise from on the day of the exercise. We made sure that we had connectivity to, uh, to video display screens so that 
Um, one of our controllers could show the MESEL, another could show uh, from, from Prep Toolkit as well the, uh, the emails that were coming back from our, um, from our players. Again, we, utilized, we made sure we were utilizing all those features of the tool. And then lastly, technology is, is great and we used it, um, as, we used it fully, um, but always have a backup. Um, so in preparation for exercise conduct, we exported uh, to Excel and, on, and to paper uh, the measles and, uh, and other exercise items um, for our evaluators and controllers to use, um, both as a backup and also because some are just, some people are more comfortable jotting down their notes, et cetera, uh, on a piece of paper and then transcribing them later online. Um, it may not sound uh, as technologically advanced or as, as modern, but um, for some people that was, uh, that was their preference and, and we accommodated them. Um, also, for some, it's just unwieldy to, to walk around uh, the exercise venue with your, with your laptop or your, or your tablet. So that, um, that was the approach that we took. But again, in summary, so happy that we, um, we used the tool, worked out so well, um, made our, our exercise team so much more efficient, collaborative, and, and really uh, ensured the success of, of our exercise. And obviously, uh, as we begin now the planning for the 2020 exercise, we will be using Prep Toolkit. Thank you. Thank you so much, Josh. That was extremely helpful. I think um, everyone on the call who uh, does what you do can appreciate the challenges that you typically have encountered in the past and how you were able to um, really make some great strides with the technology. And for anyone wondering, we do have all of their, uh, everyone's contact information. So if you have questions, all of our panelists have agreed to uh, uh, be available if you have any questions directly to some of the things that they talk about. So next we have our next two um, industry leaders. We have Mark Ballard from FEMA Region 5 and Allison Anderson from Will okay. County Emergency Management Agency. Um, Mark's going to go first and then hand it off to Allison with some of their perspectives and experiences with Prep Toolkit. So Mark, I'll let you take it away. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for the opportunity to get on board. Um, I'm just going to take a minute to talk about really the benefits that I've had using the Prep Toolkit. When Charlotte talked about the collaboration in communities in there, this has been a big asset uh, to me in FEMA Region 5. I've set up collaboration communities for Region 5 training and exercise so that I can collaborate with my state partners um, and their emergency management agencies. We can share information, files, calendars, things like that. Uh, and it's been built in helping us overcome firewalls with different state agencies and transferring files back and forth, ensuring that we're keeping latest and greatest information updated. Uh, also, one of the benefits I've had is with the CCTA grant recipients within the state of Illinois specifically, uh, I'm kind of direct liaison to them for any questions they may have on the federal side. Initially, I set up a collaboration site and we've been sharing plans and documentations and exercise AARs and all the information that's out there as we progress through the CCTA grant program. Um, so setting up the calendar of who's having exercises when and different planning meetings and things like that, it just seems to be the one stop center for everybody to share that information. We've expanded it out. We've been uh, working with uh, the St. Louis area for their CCTA grant because it has a direct impact within the state of Illinois, even though it's within a different FEMA region. So they've been on board and sharing information in the collaboration site as well. And then the file sharing, like I said, I don't know how many times I've had problems with large files not being able to make it through state firewalls and uh, different issues with transferring them. If we just keep our documents out there listed and in folders um, that they're easy to find, people can go in there and upload the newest things that they find or the latest versions of a plan draft that they're working on. And for those states that don't necessarily want to share it with outside, uh, you know, agencies that may come on board, they may just want to share it with, uh, with FEMA region and maybe the state, we can control the access and who has, you know, the ability to get into different folders within those collaboration sites. Go on to the next slide, please. And then another benefit that I really want to talk about is getting my state partners and the counties and larger uh, cities involved in, in building their exercises out in the prep toolkit. 
Um, when they start building them and if they, if they get in there and build it in the prep toolkit, they can give me access to go in and look at it. And then I can go in and collaborate with what they're working on. And I can provide them guidance um, and, and information that may help them in the development of their exercise. And it also helps me keep aware of the latest changes that they've got going on as well. So I can go in there and I can look at their objectives. I can pull up the summary of their exercise if I need to brief senior leadership within the FEMA region on it. I don't have to go back and find different files and PDFs and things like that and copy and paste and, and keep a running report. I can just go in there, click, and, and use the, the, the current information that's in the prep toolkit uh, for that. So that's really the testimony I've got about the prep toolkit. It's really a great tool and I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Allison Anderson with Will County EMA in Illinois. Uh, she's been a lot more Thanks, Mark. I think we lost you a little bit at the end. Um, thank you all for joining us on the webinar today and thank you for allowing me to present to you guys. We have been using um, the prep toolkit actually for just under a year now. Um, it came into our lives as I was finishing up my MEP actually a, a year ago this week, my, my class. So uh, Mark Ledbetter came out and showed us all and I immediately fell in love and said, how has this not been done before? And why are we not all drinking this Kool-Aid? So since then, I've made it my mission to make sure that we do everything in the prep toolkit as best as possible. So one of the things that we're working on now um, is joint collaboration through our local state region. So we're broken out into multiple regions, I'm sure very similar to many of your states are. Um, so we're in IEMA Region 3. We are now sharing and collaborating, um, collaborating on documents and exercises within the region. We've been tasked with, um, through our administrative code, to test all 32 core capabilities every four years. Uh, so as a region, we're able to share those exercises with each other and work on those core capabilities uh, seamlessly now. Uh, so locally, we are implementing this here. We are trying to build out as many exercises as possible. And um, as of last Thursday, we just conducted a functional exercise for one of our universities here. And it was very seamless. Um, again, all the stuff that had been discussed previously with sh file sharing, um, document sharing, just staying on the page with everyone has been a huge benefit to the prep toolkit. Um, and moving forward in the exercise program management. The one thing that I found was extremely valuable was that at the end of the day, you get this rolling summary of corrective actions that we need to flag and follow up on. And that's something that I have always struggled as a program manager for training and exercise programs is those corrective actions and ensuring that we close that loop on those. So the, that corrective action tracker is, um, probably the most valuable tool that we have in this toolkit. Um, next slide, please. So some of the challenges that I've been faced with is really there's a lack of users in the community. We don't have a huge base here um, that I can say, yep, everyone jump on the toolkit. It's educating people on it and having to walk everyone through it independently and say this is how you find an exercise and this is how you find the hazard explorer and this is how you find the iris um, we don't have a real good program here to implement this statewide and once we do i think this tool will be lit on fire for us and we can change make a huge impact to our preparedness needle just with our exercises and our planning, we could really be beneficial there. Um, again, it's that unfamiliarity. This is a system that you're gonna have to be in more than once a year. This is definitely a system that you're gonna have to stay on top of and be familiar with. So you can be a super user. Um, and I remember the day that the prep toolkit changed on me and I had to figure it all out again. So it has gone through changes, but the changes are always for the better. Um, so next slide. So what I would love to see for the prep toolkit, because I'm always thinking of the next step, was every municipality in my county would have an, 
account. Every one of my emergency management coordinators would have an account um, to help with their exercise design and a repository for all their emergency plans. Um, really, this could be a collaboration tool for sharing all those. Some of the files are just so large we cannot email them. Um, many providers do not allow file sharing, sharing services like Dropbox or Google Drive, so this is a good um, central repository for all that. I would actually love for the prep toolkit to take it that next step further and build those templates in there so we can generate an, a, a plan just like we can an after action report in the tool. Um, I think that's it for mine. Do I have one more slide? <laughs> nope, that's it. Well, thank All you guys. Right. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Allison. It's so helpful to hear from you and Josh and Mark and hear more of how this is being implemented out, out and about throughout the nation. So at this point, you may be wondering where to go or what to do if you have any questions prompted by what you're seeing today. So I did want to highlight that there is an online interactive user guide that's provided for Prep Toolkit. So you can find instructions about individual tools and features. And there's a search capability within um, that user guide to help you in locating information. And also, if you have questions, you can email the help desk for technical assistance. Uh, we've provided both the link and the email address here, and these slides will be provided. They'll be uploaded to the NAPSIG events page on our website. Uh, but you can also access this information directly from within Prep Toolkit. So if we go to the next slide, I've captured a, a screenshot um, there within the footer of the, the site on every page. Um, you can access that. The top help link will help you access the user guide, and then that contact us link will allow you to contact the help desk, and you can access those links uh, without, without a user account, of course. So I'm gonna hand it back to Terry to help wrap us up. Great, thank you so much. So I wanna just kind of uh, wrap it up a little bit and talk about some things that are coming up. Um, and then we do have some time. I uh, appreciate the questions that came in the Q&A. We're gonna address some of those in just a second. Um, so we do, uh, as I mentioned, this is our fourth prep tech talk and we'll have some more coming up and those topics and dates will be announced soon. Um, for those of you who have attended our summit in, in the past, it was formerly NGPS, it's now Inspire. Um, that will be taking place in Galveston, Texas at Texas A&M from November 12th to the 14th. Um, the agenda, the, the outline of the agenda and some more details are up on our events page. I would highly recommend you check it out. I, I, we're all very excited about how that is shaping um, and we certainly hope you will uh, uh, attend this year if you haven't in the past um, or if you have in the past. So uh, from there, I wanted to just um, highlight that we on our events page um, is all the information from our previous prep tech talks and the materials from today, the, the recording and the slide deck. All of that will be posted here. So for all of you who registered, you'll get an email that says they are available. Um, for anyone who got on and didn't register and happened to have the link, that's fine. Um, you'll, you can just check back on the events page and it will be there. So um, now I wanted, we have a, a couple minutes. I wanted to address some of the questions and our panelists, you guys can all see the questions um, in the Q&A feature. Um, first, I wanted to say, uh, the first question I see about uh, is that data in the Hazard Explorer tool, is it available as a REST service? And actually all of the data that's in the tool is a REST service. So when you click on each of the layers or go to that final data resources tab, um, you will get the direct link for where that data fits. So um, a lot of it was from Highfield, some of it's from NOAA, and there's our, uh, FEMA's um, National Shelter System, for example. So it's all live. Um, it's all REST services, and so none of them are shape files or downloads or anything like that. So that's a really good question. Um, so the next question I see is, does the Hazard Explorer use FEMA Thyra data? And that is an awesome question, and uh, I think we would all love to see that happen. I don't know if um, anyone from the Prep Toolkit team can speak to the migration of anything from Thyra to Prep Toolkit. Um, I think that's a, probably a bigger topic, but certainly something we would love to see added in here. Um, this is Mark. I think we actually uh, started some initial conversations with our um, National Preparedness Assessment Division colleagues about that. So um, um, stay tuned for that. But that's something I think um, we're going to be exploring. Great. Um, 
So then uh, I think Mark, you did answer this about prep toolkit using for actual events. I would say that um, you know, all the data and there's some, there's some live data in there, but it's mostly static data, but all of the maps that feed hazard explorer are available to you. So instead of having to go recreate, you can certainly go get the source web map and start with that for any dashboards or web apps that you want to create. Um, we have some in the hazard explorer suite. There is uh, templates already pre-created with some of the community lifelines. So a lot of that stuff is available to like ingest or consume within your pre-created dashboards if that makes things easier. You can add data, um, but it's only temporary right now if you add data into the Hazard Explorer tool. Um, so I would more recommend bringing that stuff out into your own systems. As far as browser computer requirements for Prep Toolkit, I've noticed, so Chrome works really well. We have noticed some hiccups. I think, um, Mark, you can, if it was Edge or Explorer, where some of the buttons don't show up. Um, like when you want to print and do things, you have to know where they are. I think it was Explorer that was a challenge. Um, I don't think there's a way for us to get over that, but otherwise the tool works um, across all of the browsers. Yeah, Terry, you're correct. Um, some of the browsers, because um, there's so many different versions of Explorer and different organizations and um, jurisdictions put their own security on um, browsers. So you're right, sometimes things disappear, but they're there. Um, as Terry says, sometimes you just have to know they're there, but um, Firefox, Chrome, they all work. But as we all know, with different browsers, things sometimes work and don't work. Right. So the, uh, the next question is really um, for the FEMA Prep Toolkit team as well um, about user management for folders. Is it done via FEMA only, or is that capability something that can be granted for specific state users? So um, the folder structure, sorry, my email has popped up. Um, the folder structure permissions is based on if it's an exercise, it's controlled by the exercise manager role. And for the community, it's based on the community manager role. Um, if you need assistance, please contact us. Um, but for the most part, that is managed within the system by those two roles, either exercise manager for exercises or community manager for um, communities. Great. And then I have one more for you all. When registering for an account, are users informed of updates to the system as well as service availability? Um, so on Prep Toolkit, um, there is an about section at the very top. So it, it talks about some of the new um, features. And as Allison said, during the July timeframe, we pushed a big update. Um, for larger updates, we have notified users in advance um, when things um, will occur and provide, we provided some training or, or PowerPoint to give them information on what was changed. Um, outages, um, they happen to us sometimes, we don't know about it. We, I mean, we had an issue earlier this week um, with DHS that was rectified and put back up. Um, but the team is very responsive in, in, in making sure that we remain up 100% of the time. Um, so stay tuned for additional uh, updates. Um, the homepage is a great place to see that and the about section is a great place to explore um, that information. So again, as Prep Toolkit matures, um, you know, Allison just gave me a whole bunch of new work to do now. So um, thanks, Allison. <laughs> no, and I, we do appreciate that input from our, from our users because again, this is not my tool, this is your tool, and I'm here to make sure it meets the, the needs of the community. Excellent. I think that hits all of our questions that I found in the, the Q&A feature. And thank you all for being engaged and asking such good questions. I think everything, there was some that ended up in the chat, and I believe, Charlotte, you tackled all of those. Um, there aren't any other additional correct, Charlotte, or that need to be mentioned? None that need to be, yeah, we're good. Okay. We're good, Great. thank you. So thank you all uh, tremendously for your time today and staying engaged. Uh, you can probably see my screen with the Mentimeter results. So we're excited that a bunch of uh, folks today became more familiar with uh, FEMA Prep Toolkit. And we look forward to your questions following this. So if anything came up that you have questions about that we talked um, over, please feel free to reach out to us. 
And um, thank you again to our panelists for all of your time and presenting today. I think it was incredibly helpful for our user community. And we look forward to seeing you all um, at our next Prep Tech Talk and hopefully at Inspire. Thanks all.